WLS 890 Chicago. The Dick Biondi Show. Temperature 56 degrees. 104. Infinity Broadcasting's WJMK. Chicago's oldies station. Hello, everybody, and thank you for listening. It's good to be back at Magic 104. Well, I'll tell you. Seems like I've been away for a month. But that trip to Memphis was out of sight. We're going to talk about that and a few other things between now and 10 o'clock. The purpose of a man is to... It's been a kick being on Legends and Loonies from the Air Check Factory. And right now, 30 seconds to reflect on my career. Ah! <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, the great Dick Biondi. Yes, and I pronounced his name correctly, didn't I? The Dick? great Ron Britton. Brit uh, Ron Brighton. Ron Britton. Ron Brittoni. One of America's truly greats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the other one? I forgot. For the game of love, that is, of course, Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders, Dick Biondi. Thanking you for letting me join you. If you've been drinking, please don't drive. Leave that to somebody sober. Right now, here comes Archie. Come on now, Bill. Turn it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Move to your left. Move to your right. Turn it up now. Everything will be out of sight. Magic 104, Archie Bell and the Drells. Let's tighten up. Dick Biondi on a beautiful Tuesday, August 18th, 1987. Good to be back at work. I'll tell you, what a weekend we have had from last Wednesday when we were with the Leo Burnett people at a magnificent party. And you're going to be hearing them later. All the way down to Memphis and talk about a great group of people. But 20-some of them that came with us. We had a wild time. I don't think any of us slept more than an hour or two each night. Talk about bags under the eyes. Oh, but it was great. It was wonderful. And throughout the night, we'll be passing along little vignettes that maybe you will enjoy. The finest NASCAR short track dirt. Working hard, pushing on, holding through. Dick Biondi on Magic 104, reminding you to win a $6,000 Wurlitzer jukebox stocked with 100 of your favorite oldies from Magic 104 and Molson Golden. Get all the details tomorrow morning between 8 and 9. Hello to all the... is the Dick Biondi 50th Anniversary Special on 94.7 WLS-FM and 890 AM WLS. So if you want music with the beat, take this great big tip from us. This is the right thing, that's why we sing. You like the Dick Biondi Show. And that was the first jingle with my name in it ever played back in 1960 on May 2nd on WLSAM. And, of course, we're still using it today. And tonight we've got a great show, so don't go away. Let's start it off the way we started the Rock of Chicago back in 1960. The Hollywood Argyles and Alley Oop. <coughs> From Chicago, it's radio's biggest night. Welcome to the induction ceremonies for the 1998 Radio Hall of Fame. Tonight, the Radio Hall of Fame inducts the king of the radio pruners, Bing Crosby. Top 40 radio legend, Dick Biondi. The voice of the Detroit Tigers, Ernie Harwell. ABC Network disc jockey, Tom Joyner. And Car Talk host, Tom and Ray Maliazzi. Our next inductee called himself the ugliest and skinniest disc jockey in the world. <laughs> That's good enough for us. 
Now to induct him into the Radio Hall of Fame, we have Brian Lamb, a gentleman who grew up listening to wild Dick Biondi. Contrary to warnings by Brian's parents, Brian did not go crazy. In fact, Brian became a successful journalist, both on the air and in print. And in 1977, he helped form C-SPAN. Please welcome the chairman and CEO of C-SPAN, Brian Lamb. It's great to be here and to think back to those nights in my hometown of Lafayette, Indiana, when I listened to my favorite DJ on the Rock of Chicago, WLS. Dick Biondi helped introduce rock and roll to a generation of kids, including me. And now to bring him into the Radio Hall of Fame is a thrill. You know, the stereotype of a top 40 DJ went something like this. He was loud, fast talking, full of platter chatter, crazy contests and stunts. He never knew job security, and he was always on the move, bouncing like a bad check from station to station and from town to town. Well, Dick Biondi fits that stereotype, and he's proud of it. <laughs> Loud, his name was, among others, The Screamer. Stunts, at an Elvis Presley concert in the late 50s, he got Elvis to sign an autograph on his T-shirt. Then instead of putting it into a safe where it would appreciate in value, he jumped into the crowd, which proceeded to tear the shirt into bits. Covered with cuts and scratches, Dick had to go to the hospital. No doubt the publicity he got for this early version of stage diving helped heal his wounds. Mike Joseph, a radio consultant who worked with him early in his career, says Dick had numerous attributes, his energy, his presentation, his appeal to the younger generation. He sounds and sounded like a rock jock should. Dick even had a hit record of his own, a novelty tune called On Top of a Pizza. He'll sing the rest. Despite his great successes in Buffalo and Chicago, Dick Biondi, being a DJ, kept on moving to LA's KRLA, to Mutual Broadcasting in 1964, to Chicago's WCFL, for a five-year run beginning in 1967. For the year 1972, it was Cincinnati, then to South Carolina for 10 years. He ultimately returned back here in Chicago in 1984 and helped launch the station known as Magic 104, known today as Oldies 103.4. There, Dick Biondi continues to rock and roll. Hello everybody, Dick Biondi with you on the big KB. Going to be with you until midnight over seven deep states in the eastern seaboard and everybody up there in Canada. Good to have you aboard. You'll never believe what happened to me this morning. My boss got on me again, called me in and he said, Dick, you talk too much, you. Okay, how about Cornelius Brothers? 104.3 tells you how to treat the lady. Oh, my friend. Radio Hall of Fame is proud to induct the wild Italian Dick Biondi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please allow me. Please allow me to say hello to my mother, who is in upstate New York, listening to WABC. Mom, thank you for you and Pop and my sister Jerry for allowing me and helping me to follow my dream, which was to become a radio announcer and meet so many wonderful people. I also want to say thanks to my lovely wife, Mary Beth. Uh, thanks to Bob Surratt, who was instrumental in bringing me back here in 1983. Thanks to Harvey Perlman, my present employer, who has the distinction of being the man with the longest record of not having fired me. <laughs> Thanks to my program director, Kevin Robinson, to my fellow employees, Scott Miller, John Landecker, Greg Brown, and Pat O'Kelly. And if you don't mind, let me please say hello to Bob Morgan, who on the year they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, allowed me to do my first commercial on the radio in Auburn, New York. To Bob Cullings, 
the man who spent four years teaching me how to say the instead of the and three instead of tree. And God rest his soul, the man who took me out of the minor leagues and put me in the major leagues, the wonderful Sam Holman. I want to take a moment to say to any young radio person that's listening tonight, if you're interested in radio, come on in. There's plenty of room, there's plenty of time. But remember two things. Take yourself not seriously. Take the job seriously. And remember, we're not really that important on the radio. What we do is to inform and entertain the people that do the important things. To my fans, thank you for enriching my life, for letting me be a part. God bless all of you. Thank you for all these wonderful years.